Hi, it's Ramesha here with Vocal Bliss. Today, I want to talk about how to transition from your chest voice to your head voice in a smooth way. That's always a little bit of a tricky area for m most singers, almost everyone. And so I'd like to address it and give you some suggestions for how you can learn to make that transition smooth and imperceptible so that no one can hear a difference in the sound between chest and head. But before we do that, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel so that you can receive notifications for my future videos that I will put out. Okay, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about what happens when we transition from chest to head voice. You've probably all experienced the fact that as we go higher in our chest voice and we approach the point where we will have to transition, the tension in the throat tends to increase a little bit. This is what happens when you're not trained. So the tension in the throat tends to increase. And so in order to get the sound out, we have to push the voice and usually sing louder so that we can put out the voice. And we, we tend to do that in order to hit higher and higher notes while dealing with the increasing tension in the throat. The other thing that happens is the sound tends to get less and less resonant and more harsh. Like if we start down here, uh, and it's bigger and resonant, by the time we get to the top of our chest voice, the sound will be more like, uh, you know, it loses that that fullness and depth because the muscles here are getting tight and we're approaching that area. So what can we do to do this in a better way? Okay, so first of all, I want to address the area before we switch to the upper range, before we go into the, the head voice. So the, the last few notes in your chest voice. So there are two things that are important uh, for you to do. First thing you need to do is sing softer because the tendency is to sing louder in order to get and push the voice out but that will just make things harder and harder and more and more tense and in the long run A you won't be able to transition and B you will be very limited in your range so you get up to a point and then you can't proceed any further. So do exactly the opposite of what comes natural to do and sing softer. Number two, instead of squeezing and tensing the throat, which is what comes natural, try to relax and open so that what you do is not something that constricts and in the long run really actually ruins your vocal cords. So in the beginning, the process of this will be a little bit like this. So you reach the top. Uh, so, so instead of straining and pushing out your voice and singing louder, go softer. Uh, okay, what I'm doing also is I am opening, relaxing my throat instead of uh, it's uh, see the difference? the throat, I think you can even see it visually, I can't tell, but you know, it's not, uh, it's, uh, this area here, the pharynx is open and relaxed. Okay, so that's the first thing to do in order to get your higher notes in your chest voice ready to then transition into your head voice. So if you continue this way, uh, The voice, I'm still singing very soft so that the, the transition is more clear. But this is what happens. You go from your chest, you have your throat open and relaxed, and all of a sudden, boom, there's something that happens inside that the voice flips up into a different space and you're in your head voice. In the beginning, it will sound more like this. More like falsetto more like that. And that's just fine. That's just fine. Falsetto is not the end result, but it can be a very important step in this process for one important reason. It's relaxed. Unlike what happens when you push your chest voice up to its limit, 
going into a falsetto will allow the vocal cords and the throat to open and relax. So to, to recap what happens at the top of your lower range, at the top of your chest, make these notes softer, open the throat, open the mouth so that the, the throat can be open and relaxed, and try to keep the throat open, especially the back of the throat, so the pharynx, this area here. Oh, like a yawn. Oh, and not ah. Uh, Oh, okay. So this way you will prepare the moment when the voice will transition to the head voice much, much more effectively. Okay, now let's talk about what happens to the notes right after the transition. Those first few notes in your head voice also need special attention because usually those notes tend to be a little bit weaker then you know they're not quite as loud so when you transition you go into your head voice and you go to oh, it sounds a little bit like this in the beginning oh, a little breathy maybe a little weak oh, and then as you go higher the voice more naturally gains strength because then higher it's easier to be louder it's kind of counterintuitive, but the higher you go when you transition into your head voice, the higher you go, the better and easier it sounds. So those few notes right there on the border, let's say, between chest and head, those are the notes that require the most attention. So how can you develop these first few notes in the head voice? So go up a little bit higher from your transition point where it's a little bit easier and hold these notes take a nice deep breath use your belly inflate your belly the way we talked about in other videos and if you don't know what i'm talking about please go and refer to one of these videos where i talk about breathing for singing and then hold the note like for example whatever vowel you choose like this is how it will sound, maybe in the beginning a little weak. And then as you hold, relax, but keep this part, the belly muscles, well engaged so that the sound doesn't die out, so it doesn't um, deflate, but it stays nice and strong. So, you know, you, you can just gradually open and relax the throat until the sound gets settled. It might take some time for you to really fine tune where is the correct place, literally place, where you're going to place your tone. You might need to move it around a little bit to fine tune. You can just hear. When you hit the right spot, it will sound better, it will feel better, it will feel more settled, more stable, and that's what you want. And that's how you can um, develop gradually from a, a little falsetto breathy sound into a full sound. And it might take some time because the muscles need to be trained to do that. And then once you've done that, then come down gradually one half step at a time. I don't know. Now I started on G. If you go from G, then go down to F sharp and do the same thing and then F and then E. And some, somebody asked me recently, how do I place my E's? E is a tricky note for a tenor because it's one of the very first few notes in your head voice. And so when you place it in your head, it tends to not want to come out very strong. So if you're singing something with a lot of volume, the tendency is to want to push your chest voice up there instead of placing it in your head voice. And... It, it's not a good strategy because in the long run, you'll always have to push and you'll never like ease. I heard several singers actually say, I hate ease. Poor E, it's just a nice little note there. It just needs um, the correct placement. So let's do this together. We're going to start here on the note G and this is good for tenors. If you're a lady, uh, you'll need to start at a different place. You need to start on C this C actually, and come down until you hit, you know, A is usually where you will switch. So you will come down gradually there and do the same thing. 
but I'm going to demonstrate now how to do it and then you can do it in the, in the range that you need to be doing it in. So let's start here. We're going to uh, hit the note, hold it for a moment, allow it to grow by relaxing, not, not pushing, by relaxing here and relying on your belly muscles to sustain. So, like that, and then come down one. This is all in my head voice. This is the famous E we were talking about. So this is how you do it, you know, and if you feel that it's weak, just work on it, work on it, just give it time. Practice this regularly because it is a muscular thing. Your muscles have to get used to the position and they also have to get strong to sustain the sound in that position. Guys, you probably never speak up there. So your, your voice is not trained and is not used to be in this area of the range. Nobody talks like this. So if, you, if you're not used to using that area of the range, the muscles are probably a little undeveloped and so they need time to get stronger. And this is also why this process often takes time. Once you've taken care of the last few notes in your chest voice, which Again, for men, it would be around the notes C, D, E flat, depending, or even E for some people. For ladies, that for you will be like F, F sharp, G, G sharp before getting to A. That will be where you transition. So those are your chest voice notes that need attention in the way I explained earlier. Once you've done that and then you've developed more strength and more stability in the first few notes of the upper range, then transitioning becomes a lot easier until you're really able to go from chest to head with absolutely no change in the tone. And one fun exercise that you can do to test whether you're able to transition without any difference in the tone is like a siren. You just slide up like that and see okay somewhere in there I transitioned I'm not sure exactly where but it happened and so if you're able to maintain a tone that doesn't change that doesn't you don't hear any difference that means that the muscles are actually trained and they're able to transition from chest to head seamlessly so I hope this was not too overwhelming for you I know there's a lot of information and every singer has different slightly different needs and different issue to resolve in order to be able to do this depending on how they've used their voice throughout their life up until the present moment and so but in general these are the guidelines you know lower lower range approach it by relaxing singing softer relaxing and opening the throat upper range hold these higher notes even if they sound weak and breathy until you figure out exactly where to place them and supporting them with your belly and then gradually you can work on the transition and make that smoother and smoother so i hope this helped and i also hope that you will actually take the time to do this work because many many singers don't want to do it because it takes a long time often to resolve this and so they they prefer to just continue pushing their voice and you know it might work in the short term but I assure you in the long term your vocal cords will thank you if you do the right work because they will last longer they will be healthier and if you use your head voice correctly you have a lot more range that you can access than if you just try to push your chest voice to the limits. There's only so much your voice can do in the chest. Uh, when I learned this technique, I was singing everything in my chest before and the highest note I could get was a G, <laughs> literally a G, like the one I played earlier. And after I trained this and worked on this, I had um, a full octave 
more than that. I could I could hit the hit G above that G, and and more. Sometimes I could hit an A. So all this to say, not that I really needed those notes, but all this to say that there's a lot more room for improvement and a lot more room to really have more notes. Having a big range is not just, honestly, it's really fun, but it's not just about that. It allows you to sing more music and it allows you to sing lower notes with a lot more confidence. Cause it's like, I can hit, you know, five notes higher than this, this is no big deal. So anyway, I hope I motivated you enough to want to uh, exper experiment with this. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. So thank you for watching this video with me. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel for more videos in the future. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.